Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration, Thursday, April 25, 2024. I pray that the Lord will be with you throughout the course of today. And may his peace be with you. May he be your guide. Our reading today comes to us from John chapter 12, reading from verse 37 to 42. And it says, But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Esaias the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who had believed our report, and to whom had the harm of the Lord been revealed. Therefore they could not believe, because that Esaias said again, He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Esaias when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believe on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his words one more time, which is here to edify us and to draw us nearer to God. Now, this reading teaches us something this morning, that not everyone will believe the things that you believe. Because we see here where Jesus, he was preaching and he was teaching and performing all kind of miracles. Yet, there were those among the crowd who refused to believe. And some, they believed but they weren't convinced, I guess, or whatever reason they choose not to accept what he was saying. And the readings state that there were some who believe but out of fear of being ostracized or thrown out of the synagogue, they did not accept or did not confess him. Now, this is something for us to pay keen attention to. The question I would ask you this morning, are you ashamed of God? Are you ashamed of who you are as a Christian? Are you ashamed of your identity? Are you ashamed to be identified with God? Because this seemed to be the case here with many of these people. With all the evidence that was presented before them, yet they did not believe. And so the scriptures say that their God hardened their hearts. Now, you may ask the question, why would God harden someone's heart? If you harden the person's heart, then the person won't be able to confess or to change. But based on my research and my understanding, when, when the Bible says that God hardened the person's heart, it means that the person has been given repeated opportunity to confess and to change their ways and refuse to do so. And a perfect example of that is Pharaoh. How many times did Pharaoh got evidence of God's supreme authority? And how many times was he warned? How many times was he put in his place? How many times was he given the invitation to change his ways? But he was just bent on doing his own thing. And remember, if you and I refuse to change our ways and refuse to be converted from our wicked ways and our sin, then there's nothing that God can do for you and I anymore. And when you reach that point where you constantly refuse the voice of the Holy Spirit, the pleading of the Holy Spirit, then that is when you your heart has become hardened. So it's not that God is preventing you from accepting him because that's not his plan. 
but because you constantly reject him and you refuse to change, you have closed off yourself from that lifeline. So now the Holy Spirit has left you and now you are in utter darkness and no one can help you. So that is what it means. And so you and I need to examine ourselves to see whether or not we are at that point. Because when we reach that point, there is no turning back. If you allow the Holy Spirit to leave you and to leave you completely, then your fate is sealed, my friends. That's when you have committed the unpardonable sin. Do you understand? Because now we have no one to what? To work on our behalf, to take our prayers up to Jesus, who in turn will plead our case before God. And so because we ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit, who plead with us constantly, begging us to change our ways, and now that person is gone, there's no one to do so, so we are left to the elements and the demonic forces which do not want you and I to change or to repent. And so at that point, we definitely won't repent and change. Okay? And so we must listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We must walk in the way of the Lord. The scripture says, this is the way, walk ye in it. Because if we refuse to walk in the righteousness of Christ, then we are going to be left up to the greatest enemy of our souls, which is self. And so a lot of time, people will draw false notions from the prophetic scriptures and they will also overlook the prophecy that has been spoken because these things were things that were prophesied before that Jesus would come and some of the things that he would have done yet still when the evidence is presented they refuse to believe or to accept so our Lord warns them that the light would not continue with them and exhorted them to walk in the light before darkness overtakes them. So he's pleading. The Spirit of God's pleading with you. Come out of darkness into the light. Because those who walk in the light must believe in the light. And follow after Christ's directions. But those who do not have faith. They cannot be all what Jesus has set before them they can't see it and so even though is there hanging on the cross in front of us it's like nothing to us because what we are in darkness darkness and so when you share scripture with folks sometimes they will give you excuse from now till next year about the reason for not wanting to accept or the reason why they can't come to God no, or whatever the excuse they want to give, but not understanding that they are only endangering their own souls. And so I pray this morning that as we consider these words, that we will not allow them to fall on deaf ears. Do not let Christ's death be in vain for your life, but Accept his gift of life and walk the path which he has outlined for you and for me. And I tell you this, that you will not be disappointed. Amen. May God bless you continually and may you keep in the light. In Jesus' name. Amen.